Hey guys, how's it going? It's Travis Mortz again with the Forest Hill Film Lab. Today I decided to do another camera review. It's been a little while since I've done one. And uh, I was looking at my shelves this morning and I saw my Nikon FM that I re recently acquired at a swap meet. And I thought, you know, that'd be an excellent camera to talk about because it's, uh, it's Nikon's, um, you know, consumer grade killer you know this is a really excellent camera but back in the day it was meant for consumers not necessarily the professional market uh, but then you know once it became popular uh, even professionals started shooting with this camera because of how reliable it was so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this camera and its history so let's get started so the Nikon FM this camera was released in 1977 and it was released after the Nikormat series and uh, this camera's size is actually the same size as the old Nikromats, but it's about 500 grams lighter. Um, so because of that, this camera kind of brought something new to the market as far as a lighter weight camera that was all mechanical. Um, another thing that this camera had that was new was instead of a horizontally um, traveling shutter, this became a vertically traveling shutter. So because of that, the uh, flash sync speed went up to 125 instead of 60, which was really awesome. And, um, and you know, that was a new feature. That was something new that Nikon hadn't started doing yet, and they introduced with this Nikon FM. Um, some other awesome things about this camera is the fact that it's mechanical. So... Um, you know, for most camera companies, we have these two different types of cameras. We have our electronically controlled cameras like the Nikon FE, the FG, the EM, um, the FG20, all, all these, and the FE2. All of these cameras are, they're this style of camera, but they're electronically controlled. Um, so that means that without working batteries, the camera will not operate. Another one of these cameras is the Nikon F3. Um, after the Nikon F2, they decided to start making their cameras electronically controlled. So the F3 is another one of those electronically controlled cameras, which is, uh, I don't know, for me, it falls in the less trustworthy uh, you know, side of things because when your batteries die and your camera dies at the same time, um, that's horrible. And the fact of the matter is, there's cameras out there like the Nikon FM that don't have that problem. So. Uh, that's that's my favorite thing about the Nikon FM is the fact that this camera is a mechanical body So just like I was mentioning earlier every camera company has these two types of cameras so like for Canon the uh, F1 and the FT and the FTB and all those different Variants those are all mechanical cameras and then their AE1 came out and that is an electronically controlled camera It needs a battery and uh because of that, I think it was it's kind of funny because this camera I would closely compare to the Canon AE-1. They're both consumer grade cameras that became wildly popular in the 80s and because of that they're very easy to find. But the, the, the largest difference, like I mentioned, is that this camera does not need batteries to operate. This camera will work in any condition and because of that this camera is actually far more trustworthy than any Canon AE-1 because I have broken AE1s in my house right now and I don't have a single Nikon FM that doesn't work. I've never even seen one. So because of that, this camera is um, you know, even more valuable, even more coveted than the Canon AE1 would be for a consumer market camera. Um, so that's the, that's the main thing about this camera that I wanted to talk about is the fact that it's a mechanical body camera, but it adopted some newer features. So, um, for instance, the metering system in this is an LED metering system. It's got a plus, it's got a circle, and then it's got a minus on the right-hand side of the finder. And it's just got LED lights that light up next to it. So that is really, really easy to read. It's a little bit more high-tech, if you will. It's not a, a needle or anything like that. Um, and because of that, the FM is really enjoyable to shoot. Despite being a mechanical camera, it has that really easy to read meter that's trustworthy and, uh, and you know, enjoyable to use. Uh, another great thing about this camera is its ISO range. It goes from 12 ISO all the way to 3200 ISO. Um, and, you know, having a camera that goes down to 12 seems pretty silly, but the fact of the matter is I've even shot 12 ISO film, so that would come in handy uh, a time or two for me. Um, some other features it has, and, I, and I'm going to give you guys a closer look at this camera, so I'm not really going to go too in-depth about it uh, during this segment, but uh, 
we'll, we'll get a closer look at it with a macro lens. But um, on this, I've got the motor drive, which can do up to three and a half frames per second. And the, I mean, just having the motor drive on this camera is so comfortable. It fits in the hand so nicely. Um, and during the time that this camera came out, the F2 was popular. So if you were a guy that shot with a motor drive, you would shoot the F2 and you have your motor drive but then when this came out it was so much more compact and lighter weight that the professionals started buying this camera to shoot with the motor drive because it's still taking the same optics it's still making the same image on the film it's just a smaller body and like i mentioned before since it's a mechanical camera it's just as trustworthy as our f2 is so here's our motor drive and to be honest with you um every fm i've had i've kind of made sure to get a motor drive for it because I enjoy shooting them with a the motor drive so much. Um, so I, I would suggest that the same because these things are so cheap to get nowadays. Uh, I don't even know what they're worth. I gave my buddy Steve a couple rolls of film for this one and that, that seemed to be good enough for him. Um, but here I'm going to take it off the motor drive for a minute so then we can take a look at the camera as a whole. And unlike the, uh, the FE... You know, the, the Nikon FE, I believe it says FE up here in the front. Um, the FM has the, the marking on the back here, and that's how you can tell what kind of Nikon you're dealing with. And see here, it says FM. And uh, so we've also got the film box holder on the back. This was a, a feature, you know, this is something that was not on every camera uh, during this time, so that's pretty cool. Um, another nice thing is this rewind knob does not just come up freely. You have to release it. And I like that. I like that it won't come up on its own because that could be annoying. This is a very old camera. That's something that could have worn out by now and it could be coming out, but it's not because of that lock. Uh, we've got a self-timer, which is pretty interesting. And I think someone, they said in, a, in this book I read that you could cancel it. No, I don't know. So you could cancel it, but it didn't really specify how. It seems like a weird thing to do. Let's see. I don't know. I don't know why or how you would cancel it. I think it's just going to go. This one's a little tired. This is one thing about these old cameras is these self-timers get a little bit tired, but it does work. Um, in, in my last video, I talked about depth of field. This is the depth of field preview lever for this camera. So like I mentioned, Nikons are very aware of this, and uh, most every single camera has it. Um, we've got our shutter dial up here, which is nice and easy. And if you look inside the camera, which I know you guys can't see, but on the left hand side here, we've got our shutter. And then on the top, it tells us what our aperture is. So that's really awesome. You could look at, you could look into this camera and not take your eye out and know exactly what your settings are. And the meter in there is so nice and easy to read. Just a nice little red dot next to the circle here. And it's very, very nice to look at. Um, we're gonna take another. We're gonna take a closer look at this camera. So uh, I think we'll just, you know, zoom in on it a little bit. You guys can see up close exactly what this thing is made of. So let's do that. So here it is, the Nikon FM. So I'm gonna just basically show you guys a close-up view of this camera, show you what it can do, and talk about how it works a little bit. Um, so one kind of weird thing is since we have the motor drive on, I'm going to turn it on. If you have this lever out, the motor drive will actually not advance until you have it in. So while shooting this camera with the motor drive, you would leave this lever in, which is kind of nice because, let's take this off, when this camera is being used without the motor drive, it's actually quite the opposite. Here. So now the camera is considered to be off if this lever is in. The meter will not be on. The camera will not fire. It's basically locked. And then uh, once that meter comes, or once that lever comes out, it's got this red button or this red dot telling you that it's on. And now the camera will fire normally, which is kind of nice, but it's a little. For me, it's a little annoying having to have this lever out all the time. It's something that's easy to forget. So if you're about to take a shot, you have to pretty much always remember that. Um, right here, I'll show you over here. See this little knob here? This little, I guess it's a, a button, if you will. 
This is how you do double exposures with this camera. So you see as we hold it, we advance the shutter, but the, the counter does not move. And we can shoot multiple exposures on the same frame. Uh, another cool thing about this shutter button is that it's threaded on the inside, but it's also threaded around that for uh, like an older Nikon soft release or older Nikon cable releases. Uh, for the F2 and the F, they would have that outside thread. So this ca or this uh, this shutter button will actually accommodate all of that old stuff, which is pretty pretty neat. Um, like I mentioned earlier, there is this little lever that pops the film door open. Nothing too crazy to see in here. We've got our film back holder. Here, this little indicator is where our where our film plane sits. That's a universal thing. Let's zoom in on it. I'm going to show you guys close up some of this stuff. So there is the release thing for the door. There's our film plane indicator. We've got a hot shoe. We've got our eyepiece. This eyepiece usually has like a rubber um, ring around it that you could screw in. Of course this one didn't come with it so I don't have one. Um, film back holder. Here's that little switch. And you guys can't tell because I'm shooting this video in black and white, but the 125th of a second is actually red. So you know that that is your flash sync speed. And then to change the ISO is really simple. You just lift up on this and turn it. Let's see, like that. Pretty, pretty nifty. Let's get some light in here. Let's see if I can't stop down a little bit. There we go. Some more depth of field for you guys. So there's that, and then we're going to look at the front of this camera. Here is our self-timer lever. I'm not going to do it again because I, I did some of it earlier, and it's just really tired and kind of sad, so I'm not going to. And then uh, our lever for the depth of field preview. You see it closes down our aperture blades. Look how nice that looks. There we go. Beautiful. And then you see the second row of numbers here? The second row of numbers here is actually um, what you're seeing when you're looking inside of the camera's uh, viewfinder. You see the second row of numbers here, and that basically indicates what aperture you're at. And then uh, I'm going to show you guys something nifty about the FM. You see here this little tab. If you guys have watched my earlier video on Nikon lenses, you would know that that is our AI coupling tab. You'll see it get taken up by the lens here. Let's see. You see it getting grabbed by the lens when I put the lens on. So that's how our camera meters, right? Well, this FM was made in 1977, so a lot of guys still had their older non-AI lenses. So although it will not meter, you press this button here, this small little button, and that will kick out of the way. Let me see, I've got something here for you guys. So then if you put an older non-AI lens on there, like this behemoth, you'll see, let me get up close again. You'll see that this tab is completely out of the way. Oh man, that's really close. And I could change my aperture freely without it interfering with the lens. Another awesome feature of the FM. Like I said, the meter will not work when you're doing this, but that doesn't really matter because, uh, you know, you can figure it out without a meter. The meter is just an added luxury. So that's pretty nice. If we just kick it back down, it locks in place, and we will put our regular lens back on. Look at that. Very, very nice. Um, here's our lens release button, standard on all Nikons. Here's our PC port, very nice. I believe that, yeah, this is threaded as well. These older Nikon PC ports are threaded 
so you could actually screw a PC cord into it rather than just sticking it on there. This is the original hood for this lens. And um, like I mentioned in the earlier videos, you see these lines here. I had a really crappy out of focus view in my depth of field video, but see these lines here are indicating our depth of field range at specific apertures. They're all color coded. This outside one's orange, this one's blue, and this little one's yellow. And that corresponds to orange is f16, blue is f11, and 5.6 is yellow. So kind of a different system, but it gives you a general idea. And what else can I tell you guys about this? Here's our counter, very easy to see. Very nice. And yeah, that's about it. If you look at the bottom, you'll see we have our battery port. This is the contacts for our motor drive. And this is the uh, the actual drive for the motor drive. It looks like this guy's had one on it before I put one on. Um, and we also, of course, have the spool release to rewind the camera. Um, but yeah, this is the Nikon FM. Got a nice little touch of leather here and leather here. It's a pretty nice camera. It's uh, It gets the job done. The all-mechanical Nikon FM. There you have it. Now that I've given you guys a little bit of a closer look at the Nikon FM, you can see you know, it's, it's actually very uh, a very simple camera, but at the same time it's got everything that you could really ask for in a SLR. Uh, I've never really been shooting an FM and felt like I needed more. Um, in addition to the Nikon FM, Nikon released the FM2, which is like a, a extremely amazing camera. I've had one, but I sold it. Uh, maybe I could borrow it from my buddy and, and talk about that. But the FM2 was uh, another mechanical camera, but they introduced titanium shutter blades, and uh, they were actually honeycomb. And because of that, they were this camera is able to achieve one four thousandth of a second shutter speeds mechanically. Um, so the FM2 is like the FM on steroids because it can achieve this extremely fast shutter speed with again no batteries. It, it doesn't need batteries. It's a mechanical camera. So um, you know, for the for the guys out there looking for an FM, it's a very common camera to find. Like I mentioned, I, I bought this one at a swap meet. This was the end of the day purchase. Nobody had bought the camera all day. And uh, it had a 55 2.8 macro lens on it, which actually I have right here. This is the lens that I used to show you guys the up close. So it had this lens on it, and I got it for $60. And like I mentioned, it was the end of the day deal. This guy had been out there all day trying to sell it, and I even offered him uh, 75 in the morning, I think, and he passed it up, and then I came back at the end of the day and gave him 60 bucks for it. So um, it kind of just gives you guys an idea that these cameras are readily available, they're easy to find, and you probably won't spend more than $100 on one, which is really excellent. You know, to be able to get a camera of this caliber for $100 or less is, you know, that's amazing. So um, I have shot a few rolls of film through this camera because I've kind of fallen in love with it. So I'm going to show you guys a couple images here. Um, some of these first black and white images I'm going to put in there um, of my daughter's birthday party. These were shot at 1600 ISO. I was pushing some HP5. So it kind of gives you an idea how well this camera even meters in low light situations. This, these were, you know, it was a high ISO situation and the meter uh, obviously did excellent. I, I did every single one of these exposures following what my meter had to say and not just guessing. So um, you guys get a general idea of how accurate the Nikon FM really is. Um, they say that this meter is accurate up to half of an EV value which is like half a stop or what have you. So that's pretty pretty accurate. So um, take a look at these few photos and I'll see you guys in just a minute.
so I hope you guys enjoyed some of those examples and as you can see the camera um, you know it does a great job at reading the light at determining exposure um, the the meter in it despite being you know from 1977 is extremely trustworthy and for that I really I really value this camera quite a bit because even in some of my older f2s where I'm just using a needle I don't feel like it's quite as accurate I know it is and I know it's given me you know a correct reading but something about the FM is more trustworthy the the LED metering system is so pinpoint accurate that uh, I, I really do trust it when I'm when I'm shooting with this camera I feel as if the settings are always correct and my results usually show the same um, you know you wouldn't really be able to tell a F100 roll from an FM roll unless I told you um, based on the the negatives so I think that's excellent um, and like I said, this camera is all mechanical, so it's very trustworthy. So I really suggest if you guys are out there, any of you Nikon shooters are looking to maybe get into film and you want something that's a little bit more analog, something a little bit more involved, um, but compact, I would look at the FM. Because some of my earlier videos, I talk about the F2, which is an absolutely excellent camera, but it's very clunky. It's very heavy and big and cumbersome. And you know it, even even I feel like sometimes I don't want to carry it around and then in another video I talk about the F100 which is an all automatic film camera you know it's not quite as uh, you know an involved process you could just let the camera do the work so like I said of course that's nice but it's not such a fun thing to shoot with but this FM is very um, very enjoyable you still have to change your settings you still have to do something but when it comes down to it you know you can really trust the meter and because of that you're not really on your own you know uh, so anyways that is the Nikon FM I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video it I don't think it's gonna be too long there's not much to talk about because it's such a simple uh, well-renowned camera but I, I had to talk about it since I have one so anyways if you guys have any questions or comments please leave them below um, this camera also came in black, so if you're on eBay looking for it, that one might cost a little bit more, but they're all excellent. And uh, yeah, like I said, comment below, subscribe if you guys are enjoying my videos. I'm trying to make as many as I can before I have to return my friend's camera to him. So um, if you guys have any suggestions or anything, please comment. Anyways, thanks you guys again for watching, and until next time, uh, keep on shooting.